portion. Uh, right after the department reports, we will have the citizens' concerns portion. Um, it was an oversight on my part, and, and I do apologize. We will hit those citizens' concerns. Um, Chief Brick. First of all, the number of calls answered per police department last month was 253 calls. The number of miles driven for the police department last month was 3,313. The number of tickets that was issued, 62, and we had a total of 71 cases appear in front of the City of Lake Park's court services. Upon doing that, going to the next side, we put together, prior to court, I asked the court officers, Ms. Ann and or Ms. Fowler, to give me an idea of the possibility of income received prior to and for court. The first amount you see here is $21,984. We received payment of $3,000 and some extra prior to court. And after court, final depositions brought in approximately $10,275, which is incumbent to the $3,000 that we received prior to court. Is there any questions? So the amount of possible fines collected before court in April was $21,984. The amount of fines collected after April court session. So what you're going in was potential for 21,984, and when you came out with was 10,275. That's correct. Uh -huh. uh, keep in mind, some of these cases were reset to another court calendar. Okay. And that's running a total on that prior. So that's pretty close to 50 percent. Fairly close, yes, sir. Were they found not guilty, or some were actually found not guilty, some were also uh, dismissed, and uh, some were reset. Officer dismissed? Some will request an officer dismissed because of basically reviewing over it and giving warnings. The next so, um, Chief, of the 253 calls, how many of those were 911 calls? How many were traffic stops? And then how many were uh, like follow ups or back ups with the state or the county? Um, I'd like to see a breakdown of that other than the, the, the calls. And then under uh, tickets issued and warnings, I'd like to see that broken out by officer. Just the total per officer, like we had on that other report. I can be more than happy to do that. Can I uh, refer to the attorney? And something like that is that not listing the officer on the citation is that not a, a gray area there it comes similar to a quota system or something well not that you treat it that way but just tracking citations by officer i don't see an issue with that as far as Oh, we need to know is the number of tickets. Really? The 
chief himself is can make the determination whether an officer is not do is not pulling his share and then go through the policy and counsel him and then if he's not still not doing any better then he can write him up or whatever and go first uh, or we, we shouldn't be in that like that uh well, that like what we have a chief of police for to make that determination with his officers and all we really need is just a total uh, like that to keep us advised what the department is doing not each officer that's the chief's job mm -hmm. um, <coughs> we did have a request by a council person for that information and uh, we have an opposition so we can put to a vote is that information not that i wonder i don't know if it's I think that would depend on if the case is pending. I think it depends if the case is pending. I think if the case is pending, then it's not available for the market until it's been adjudicated. Right, so certain records are the initial police report is available to certain people. Who um, are just in the in the judicial in the incident? Um, I believe. Initial police reports are subject to production. Um, the rest of the police investigation and therefore it's not. Well, even the initial, even then, the initial police report is subject to production, but nothing else is until the investigation is, is concluded or the, or the case is disposed of. Unless it has to be properly impacted, that's the first thing. I.e., what the juvenile fixes. So, I believe that all of that information would, would come up in record at some point, but it's going to depend. Um, certainly, <coughs> the results of court are in record. Um, I believe it come up when an officer evaluation comes up before the chief. My guess is going to be broken down to it. It's 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 just something we all to decide on how to manage the department. What is the average time from that? Is there an average time from that uh, ticket to? Court, or is the average? It could be 30 days, sir, and sometimes it could be reset to 60 to 90. So, so we couldn't really say that we could be looking at uh, reports from 90 days ago safely. It, it could be, but that's even more work for myself if that's what the council wishes. I have to contact 911 dispatch, violence, and see if they're able to appropriately break down our call line. That may be something else, and there may be additional charge. We asked for that before. There is no additional charge, and we already have the broken down. But there's a difference between two out of 53 calls and how many were actually police calls, so that we can get a handle on how many calls we're really handling versus how many people just call in. I think I remember getting information on those calls, and I don't believe it was a very easy process. I think they did make some kind of a real ration on that. Um, but it's not Who got the ticket? 
I don't care. I wouldn't know them anyway. Um, it shouldn't be a secret. Anything that we're doing in, in the city should be open. And we should gladly share that information with people because we don't have anything to hide. Um, but all of this, you know, control, I gotta hide things, I, I, don't, I don't go for it. But if the council doesn't want to know, that's fine with me. I don't, because I don't, at some point we're gonna be held accountable and we're not gonna be able to answer the questions. And that's, that's the main word right there is accountability. And I don't want to cross any lines as far as, you know, legal aspects of, of giving that information until a court case is, is heard and adjudicated. But, um, it doesn't sound to me like anything that's requested has anything to do with investigative files or incident reports or anything else. It's just that it is something I mean, those records. They, they, so those records don't uh, have a name of the person. You just show a, a trend or a record. Like in the paper where you'll read about the well, police department making 10 arrests or you know, three DUIs, that kind of thing. That's kind of thing, right? Is, it, is that what you're asking for, Ms. Cheryl? And then you're asking for a breakdown on, on per officer? It's not already gotten a total number of tickets written. But I think what Ms. Cheryl's asking for is specifics for each officer. Right? Right. Um, uh, a lot of that can do it. Well, there, there's no open records to show you all of that request. It's simply a matter of for the council to determine that. Yeah, that matters. Matters. Well, if it's not, I don't have a problem with it if it's not uh, crossing any legal, legal lines. Um, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I don't think it's going to be crossing any, any legal boundaries. My, my number one thing is to protect the city. As a matter of fact, when Bert was the police chief, Every month we reported how many tickets of what kind were written. Every month. And we published it. Not just the council, but we published it anybody. Yeah, but the not by officer. I did it by department. Mm -hmm. uh, we had like three or four DUI, five or six speedings and whatever like that. Now I, I wouldn't have no problem with that. No, but not by person break it down by officer. I would go by department. For the department chief, let's say I like, you had five DUIs and ten speeding tickets and things like that. And that's what I would that's what I would recommend that you put down on the next report. So uh, the, the council have, will have to make a motion on that. Because uh, we have uh, one council person asking for that information and another council person saying that they don't think that, that information needs to be put out there, so I need to hear a motion. Well, I'll make a motion that the chief start tracking cases by the classification of the tickets, not by the officer, but by the department. Okay. Oh. So we have a motion to, for the chief to uh, track the specifics of the ticket, but not the officer records. So, like I say, three DUIs, five speeding tickets, and okay. so many tinted windows. And Okay. So we have a motion to be able to second. No second is motion. All right, discussion. That that would be perfectly legal in my own opinion. But when you start going tracking and putting putting it down here like that by officer, that's the chief's job to make sure that each officer is doing his job. <clears throat> and not the council persons to oversee it. If uh, we're not satisfied with the chief, then we can talk to the chief about his performance as a supervisor. But let him do his job. If the city wants a little more information, I, uh, I did it like that. I put, broke it down. We even had how many calls we answered to burglaries. And I'm, uh, uh, I don't see nothing wrong with that. How many calls for, uh, calls for service and calls for uh, family disputes? Call for motorist assistance. Like a, uh, I don't see nothing wrong with that. <coughs> so we have a motion, we have a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? All opposed? Sam? I refuse to say. Um, with, with that, get on with this report. With that, the motion was for. Uh, not have specific 
officers me. Not by category. And they have it by category, but not by officer. And we had uh, three, one of, one of standing, and that abstention becomes what? Comes a yes vote. Are you aware of that, Sam? I'm well aware of that. Yes. No. Clarification from the council, please. If council members are getting complaints, is that not to be brought to my attention as a chief of police? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I would be in that case. I'll make a further motion on that. If a council person gets complaints that she refers it to the mayor, she recuses herself from any action on that, or I do. Like that would refer to the mayor, and the mayor refers it to the chief for action. On it for him to contact it, because he represents our department and it's his job to do that. So we have a motion that all the planes. I'd like for him to bring one of his motion instead of she. I'm sorry, that was just. Yeah, that was uncalled for. That was, I, I apologize. It was not meant that way. It was yeah, just he or she is what I meant. Okay. It was not aimed at you, I promise, Andy. Yeah, I'm the only she up here. Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, I'm sorry. I, it was a slip of the tongue. Okay. Can you reward your motion, please? I'll make a motion that if a council person or a, a let's put a council person <coughs> receives a complaint from a citizen, he then she he or she then refers it to the mayor, and the mayor will then refer it to the chief for action on it and to investigate it. Okay, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second that. Okay, discussion. All in favor? All opposed? Once again, Sandy, I apologize. It was not a good Thanks Thanks for the clarification. Continue on your Contacting, we have a new probation company that we've taken upon. Can you get the back of the room in order, please? It's very difficult to hear when people are laughing. Can we please have some order in the, in the council, please? Thank you. Continue? Yes. We brought on a new probation company, which I've been very satisfied with at this present time. They're in the process of reviewing our records, and they notified me that currently we have 40 people on probation. Out of those 40 people, we have 13 of them that is in warrant status. Being notified that we intend in the near future to see if we can execute these said warrants after we make sure they put on the computer the proper status and see if we recover the funds. To allow, right now, out of 36 active cases in probation is due to the city of Lake Park, $30,344. In the fees for the 13 warrants, that is due to the city of Lake Park is $10,940. And I was assured by the probation staff that they will try and bring that $30,000 number down and get contact with these individuals and start working out. Continuing on, persons arrested for the month by the Lake Park Police Department, total five. Two of those were driving under the influence. One was a suspended license, one was no license, and one was failure to appear. On these individuals that were arrested, we intend to ask the court services to add that additional fine onto their citations for housing in the Lowndes County Jail. In cases that were investigated, we have a theft at Fred's department store and a false name of an individual who, when they come to court, will be placed under arrest and an adjudication follow. Current updates to advise the council. The computer service is still being activated, which is our server device. I've contacted the individual today and we're making a range appointment so that we can download our programs and our information onto the server. Thanks to the mayor's due diligence, we were able to come up with about four or five monitors, confidence from the police department, Mr. Mayor, for doing that lookup. We now have monitors that we'll be able to hook up. So that part is going very well. Excuse me. New business. <coughs> on the back of your phone, please. 
I thought it'd be best to send a two page to do this a single page. With the council of pleasure, I'd be more than happy to give you two pages. New business. I've spoken to Mr. Patterson in reference to community service personnel. I intend to have a meeting with Mr. Patterson and the personnel that handles probation so that we can start bringing community service individuals here and keep them within the city. That will hopefully help us out a little bit. With the help, as previously mentioned, with Chief Brown, we were able to recover a grant. This grant value is at a price of $6,000. The mayor eloquently put it that we were able to buy refrigerators. In addition, with this money, we were able to purchase and have forwarded and should be here shortly, actual first aid bags that would be placed in each police car. These first aid EMS bags will help us and assist us should there be an emergency here at City Hall or outside when we arrive prior to the ambulance personnel. In addition, anybody who's trained in the medical field will be able to pick up this bag and use it. We felt, basically myself, instead of using the $6,000 grant on computer software, it would be best to serve our citizens and our community and individuals on the council to have defibrillators and first aid kits. We intend to train all personnel that is affiliated with these defibrillator devices so they don't know how the proper operation will be. And those funds, as I say, will be dispersed and take more to follow. <coughs> in the past workings in Europe, I was an NXL instructor. What does that mean? To teach first aid, defibrillation, etc. I'm willing to supply first aid books and defibrillation books to be put into our vehicles to assist and also have one here at City Hall to assist a very short way should there be any first aid mechanisms needed. Next thing I wish to ask is the council's permission. I wish to decommission a 2008 Ford Crown Victoria bearing identification number to F Frank A Adam F Frank P Paul 7-1 D Victor 0-8 X as in X Frank 1-2-8 this vehicle is operated by Officer Kenzie. Through a period of time, this vehicle has been wrecked twice and is in the process of throwing a rod through the engine. Because of that, I've taken it offline, and with the help of Chief Brown on his time, myself, and the officers, we were able to take parts off of that vehicle and transfer them onto the Sloop Top 2008 Crown Victoria saving the city a significant amount of money for any future problems that they have with that vehicle. So I thank Chief Brown for all of his assistance in keeping our police cars running. Without his help, I think we'd be investing in plastic or maybe even duct tape. So I wish to ask the council to please bring that to a vote so I can decommission that vehicle that is unoperative and not to be able to be put in service so that we can sell it, set funds, and then be transferred back to their origination. And hopefully earmarked for the future for law enforcement purposes. Council, what's your pleasure on that? I request, I'll make a motion that we decommission the board, bury it on that serial number, that we also take it off the insurance and have, have it sold as whatever we can get out of There is no salvage in that vehicle? Salvages as in a question? As in putting the engine in that vehicle? From talking with the mechanic and also with Chief Brown, who I respect as a mechanic, the cost effectiveness that the vehicle would value at approximately $3,500 would outweigh putting a new engine in and a transmission in the value that would have to be for that. Chief Brown? Yeah. Dave, well, what do you know about that? Uh, I think, uh, like you said, you know, my involvement with cars and working on stuff like that, I think if we're going to put it on the road for an off I think it's, uh, 
I think it's called prohibited. I think that you know, once you start with car that many miles, that ain't going to start having problems. One thing is just a continuation. You know, I think at the end we can pour more money into the car than it's actually worth it. So, so there are other things wrong with it? Yeah, right exactly. If we put a motor in the car, we have to put, put, put transmission in it. You know, that leads to other things. I just, you know. And what do you think something like that would cost? To put a motor in transmission in it? Between five and seven grand. So you can't, you know, you've got to get, you've got to get a, a, a remanufactured motor from a replicable place. You know, you just can't carry it to a shop and say, hey, you know, stick it right there. You want one that's got a warranty to it and all that, you know, and that, that, that they're expensive. Basically, that particular motor that car. Do you go $7,500 and a $3,500 car? Not counting the suspension, there would be tires, you know. And you have new equipment because the equipment's been pulled out, right? Yes, sir. We're using that in the slip top for the best features. So we salvage one car by, by cannibalizing the other. Yes, Once sir. Once again, we're... I'll reiterate my motion that we follow the chief's recommendation, decommission this car, and set it for whatever we can get out of that. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. Discussion. So you're saying this cost for him? Yes, sir. I feel it is. And what about tires? Are they tires? Bad. Bad tires? What is, good, what is good on that car? Windows. Windshield? Windshield? Yes, sir. The seats were taken out and put in the other car. The punch pumper was taken out and put onto the other car. The hood was taken off and put on the other car. That's basically the trunk was taken off, including the lights, headlights, etc. So the other car is in good working order though? The one who's driving that car right now? Myself and Officer Barnes. And is it? Thanks to Chief Brown and my meeting him on Sunday, we were able to put back brakes on the car, save the city a significant amount of money also. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second discussion. All in favor? Okay. The next issue I need to bring to the city council's attention intact to your packet is an article from the Georgia Municipal Law Enforcement. Basically, in a nutshell, please feel free to read this article. It's a possibility that law enforcement or liability insurance can be say reduced about 12 percent if we have policies and procedures place what they call the 12 high risk. As I stated two councils ago and our last council, I'm in the process of writing policies and procedures and I intend to follow along this line, which hopefully will save us 12% on our insurance for liability. Uh, please make yourself aware of this article that comes from the GMA magazine that we have. When you get them read, I would like to have a copy of it. I wish to give all kinds of members, if we can, put them on a disc, or if you so choose, give you a hard copy. I'm in the process of asking another law enforcement agency that is CALEA certified which is a federal certification to review all of them and give their blessings to. And I'd be more than happy to supply a copy to our city attorney for this purpose. Next issue. Law enforcement for a number of years take pride in a lot of things. One is how they represent themselves, the city, and individuals. Two is how long they operate and how they handle situations. Third thing that's very important to law enforcement is the camaraderie that you have from one agency to the other. This is shown by the officer, the staff member, and the caliber that we have. I'm pleased to announce that we have redone the patch with the assistance of Cheryl's input for the city seal. And I, in the police department, would like to present one to each one of the council members. As the very first patch, and a new patch, is used by the City of Lake Park Police Department. This same insignia has been placed on each of our new police cars with nothing but positive coming back. We now, in my view, again, have a police department that citizens, the outside neighbors, can be proud of. 
and I will thank Sandy for her input because of the seal, which was a really important part of and the message, Mr. Kent, because we wanted to incorporate that because that's what they talks about, and that's important. So that was handed out. <coughs> the last and final issue, I would like to request the council in their wisdom and consideration to please allow me to bring Officer Brett Barnes as a full-time officer with the city of Red Park. Officer Barnes works different hours. He's there when I need him. He works with my other officers and is placed when I need him to be placed. Sometimes they work together. They split up, giving a higher profile and giving a better protection at times to the citizens. We don't always work together with everybody. There's times he comes in at 2.30 in the morning and he works at 8.30 or 10.30. I don't know if you need to go into executive session, but after talking to Ms. Fowler and also Ms. Ann, I believe my budget will hold that. So I ask you to please have consideration Including his retirement, the money for his retirement. Is that? that, that that's correct. Too, because you're always a, a year in, in this, this this budgeting period, it, it will not be picked up until the next next budget. I feel that the personnel that we have are probably some of the best we have in town, and I'd like to be able to pat them on the back in various ways. In one particular way, as Officer Barnes is given his time. I'll entertain any questions the council has at this present time. Uh, you, you said you were using Officer Barnes on uh, kind of a rotating uh, schedule. You never really placing him on a specific time slot. So, kind of, uh, from a law enforcement uh, point of view, so you had an officer who the bad guy never knew when they were going to be on. If somebody was case in the city, they would know the, the schedule was already made. Yes, sir. How, how do you plan on um, maintaining that, that element of surprise if, if you were to bring on uh, Mr. Barnes as a full-time officer? I will work with Mr. Barnes 42 hours a week, 84 hours within our pay period scale itself, and I'll deploy him in the hours that we need him the most. When I first deployed Officer Barnes, I deployed him at 2.30 in the morning until 10.30 in the morning. A lot of people were rather shocked at the traffic stop sign from Mr. Carter's house. The traffic actually came to a complete halt there. We also are able to get out and see who's in our city at that time of night. In addition, under rules and regulations by the law set forth to do roadblocks, we have certain elements we have to meet. One of those elements is to make sure that we have a number of officers conduct the roadblock safely and securely, and it has to be projected. He's been assistance on that also. Breaking the officers up and having them patrol throughout the area, I think it's helped deter the crime and it's given the citizens, the ones that I have spoken to, a peace of mind. Again, I continue to work them where I feel the need is to deploy our manpower and law enforcement strategies. <coughs> I'll make a motion that we go in the meeting that we go into executive session to discuss this personnel matter. We have a motion to go into executive session at the end of at the end of the agenda. At the end of the agenda. Okay. Um, we have a second on that. No second. Okay. 